Hey guys, welcome back to another wonderful episode of the Bourbon Jamaican. And tonight, Brady's with us. Uh, dropping nukes, he's still doing his dry January, so he's he's holding up strong. Congrats to him. Uh, but today we got something special. We got that uh, old Foresters uh, 1924, and we also have a nice little lineup to go with it. So we're gonna do a, a blind tasting. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of uh, 100 proof bourbons here. So from my left to right, so your guys' is right to left, we have them lined up cheapest to uh, most expensive. So we have the Old Forester Signature, uh, orange label, it's about $20. Early times bottled in bond, it's about $27 for a liter. McKenna, it's about 55 to 60 around here. And it's, uh, it's the only 10 year in the lineup besides the 1924. Um, and then we have the old Forester single barrel. I got that one for about 70 in Washington, Seattle. Um, we don't really see those around here all that often. Yeah. A lot of the stores around here like to do the blue label barrel proof picks instead. More of a presidential. Yeah. And then we have the new uh, 1924. So we've got two 10 year bourbons, but all five are 100 proof. Um, been seeing a lot of press about this. Um, I thought it was going to be, I thought it'd be interesting to put the early times in the blind here because the 1924 shares the same mash bill as early times in King of Kentucky. So, um, very interested to see how this ends. Yeah. Well, let's start with it. We're going from left to right. Yes. So we'll, we will be trying all five of these blind. All right. Wow. I'm not sure what that this one is, but it's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, I smell, I smell the vanilla. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of butterscotch. That sounds like the McKenna. I think we got that same thing with the McKenna. A little bit That's of oak. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, and that special herb that I keep talking about. Yeah. So I think this is the McKenna. Yeah, it's got a baking spice note to it right away and then you get that oak and vanilla and brown sugar um last one might be drinks way under its proof that don't drink 100 proof at all yeah. pretty smooth so we're on the glass number two this one we get a, a hint of thyme i get that i get that herbalness but i get a nice caramel note on this also pretty heavy caramel actually really viscous oh my goodness that is delicious <laughs> that one's super super thick oh. especially coming off class one that one is really really oily nice uh so it's really mouth coating that's a new that's a new like a whole new taste for me <laughs> that blows the first one out of the right water to me the water. <laughs> it's a uh, it's got this really nice like caramely brown sugar aftertaste to it yes. and just a hint of like mintiness and that thyme note that that's delicious. pretty solid all right so let's get in the glass number three <laughs> go to those this and i should still taste that caramel yeah. it's like it's still just lingering it's like a lingering taste it's almost like you take a pinch of brown sugar and it's dropping on your tongue that's a small little piece of this we're I'm laughing because we were talking about this before the video that um, Old Forester's press release for the 1924, they said it's uh, the taste, the palate was a chocolate covered graham cracker, and that's what I get on the nose for this one. Uh, um, okay. One other note, too, I forgot to mention uh, these have been uh, airing out on the bar top for about a half an hour, and I've had one pour of the 1924. I tried it two days ago when I bought the bottle. And I tried it side by side with the 117 series nine year bottled and bond old forester. And I told Sheldon it was it was even for me. I thought that they were on the same level with each other, which was kind of interesting considering the one was a limited release and this is supposed to be a shelf product. That was kind of reassuring and I was kind of happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. do chase that chocolate very chocolate yes i that one is 
that one's very viscous as well. It's got a little bit of a toasty note to it. It's almost like it's like it's double oaked. Yeah. Um, none of these are double oaked, but it's got that it's got that wood sugar note. And now that I'm sitting here, I'm getting that cinnamon graham cracker aftertaste. Oh, you might you might be onto something with this one. Whatever it is, it's good. I don't. It's pretty close to me for number two, but they're kind of they're kind of they're different for yeah. me. You got your they're close, but yeah. There's a, there's a, a signature taste. Yeah, I mean with both. Glass two is just so strong and caramel and spice, and the, the glass three is just graham cracker and chocolate. It's like a s'mores. Yeah, I really like glass number two. All right, so glass number four. The leg on this is oh my goodness! Look at that. It's like it's yeah. it's so like oily, like it just sits there. And just coats the glass. It doesn't even have streaks or anything. It's got a really nice brown sugar note to the nose. Yeah, a lot of floral. Yeah, a lot of floral to it. Yeah, it's starting to it's starting to turn into a flowery flower petal kind of thing. So this one I'm tasting a lot of floral notes, and it's thin. It's um. It's it's got a nice oiliness to it, but it doesn't have a finish like the oh, like glass yeah. two and three do. Yeah, you kind of you get it on the first sip, then it just yeah. kind of go away, and then the burn, yeah, that warm hug kind of stays. Yeah, you get a nice right. Kentucky hug off of this. <laughs> I'm I'm getting like a like a little bit of a lingering floral note, but not not much. I mean the the finish does not compare to glass two and three. Kind of nervous. Glass two is probably gonna be my fave. Putting in glass three is not too far behind, but it'd be <laughs> weird to see versus what you're paying the big bucks for, but what you're paying the yeah. cheaper end. We've had it before where we've had which one was the last one? We had the Eagle Rear, the Russell's Reserve, ten year. McKenna. And the McKenna, and I definitely really enjoyed the Russell's Ten and like it's Eagle Rear. Yeah, Eagle Rear was like my go-to. Anybody wanted a recommendation, I'm like Eagle Rear, but that completely changed my thinking and my palate. You know, and like trying something different. So you don't always have to grab the top shell or the whatever staple name yep. is up here. You can find. The same tenure down here that's just as good or in my case even better than what you think it is and i realize i've mentioned the price for all of them except for the 1924. <laughs> so the 1924 msrp is 115. i um i found it on the shelf for 109.99 um so shout out to liquor city that was really cool yes um but to your point i think i think the two cheap bottles here on the end that are under thirty dollars, I think one of those will end up in our top three. Those are both just solid pours. Yeah, so you don't always have to get the big price us. tag. Yeah. All right, so we're in the last glass. Yep. So glass number five. Not really getting much on the nose. Uh it's kind of bland. Maybe like a slight banana. I know old Forester's known for banana. I don't always get it. Yeah, like a. I get like a banana bread. A banana bread. Oh. Yeah, because I'm getting that little uh, that nutty. That's got a nice viscosity to it. That's that's weird. It's got a little bit of an herbal note to it. And it doesn't have it's floral. A lot of burn. I'm surprised. No, it's that's pretty, it's a very it's, easy drinker. Yeah, it's a. I'm I'm guessing it's the. Black label. Yeah. Very well could be. Um, I've never had that one either. So I've had everything else except the, the two on the end. So, wow, we're in for a treat. <laughs> um, oh, another disclaimer. We we were going to put in the Old Forester 1897. That's also a bottled and bomb instead of the McKenna. Um, but we decided against it because we wanted something else with age. And Sheldon and I were talking about it beforehand, and honestly, we think that this orange label signature is as good, if not a little bit better, than the yeah. 1897, considering it's less than half the price. Um, 
I think I definitely have a top three. Yeah. And drop us a line in the, the comment section. Let us know if you've uh, blind these, if you've had them, if you've not had them, uh, what are your takes on them, and how do you how do you like them? What how do you rank them in in your taste or your palate? And if you're new to the channel, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, subscribe uh, if you're returning. It's always glad having you back, and I we can continue to try to give you good stuff. And thank you for the support. We're out hunting every day to give you guys the best input we can on the new stuff. Um, I would hate for somebody to go out and spend you know three hundred dollars on the secondary market for nineteen twenty four if we sit here and blind it and get last place to a couple of thirty dollar and sixty dollar bottles. Yeah, I would say that's as far as what I've been seeing, everybody's saying don't overpay for it. If you can get it and you want to try it, go for it. But it's nothing to call home about. Uh, even though like your birthday barrels, some of them come in at eight, nine year. I think there's a couple that come in around the twelve year. Yeah. And like with your presidential, those coming around eight or nine as well. Yeah, some get up to 12, but they're mainly in that 8 to 10. Yeah. That's the main reason I bought the 1924. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about it, but it's the same mash bill as King of Kentucky. So a lot of people have been talking, hey, you know, Eagle Rare, Henry McKenna, and Russell's are all 10-year, and they're around the same proof, and they're, you know, 30 to $50. But the main reason I gave in and paid the 110 was the 16-year King of Kentucky that came out this year. Yeah. Is sitting on shelves for a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. This is the same thing, but it's six years younger. And granted, it's you know twenty-five to thirty proof less. But I mean, it's. I feel like this is the closest I'm ever gonna get to owning a King of Kentucky. So I thought, why not? I've had a four King day. of Kentucky. One day, and we're gonna <laughs> yes. buy one day. One day. Let's hope. All right. So with ranking. So this is my one, two. Very curious to see how this ends. <laughs> I've got three that are pretty close for me. Yeah. So I am ready. So from least favorite. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, sorry. All right. Drum roll. So my last place is glass four, which is. <laughs> Green. Mine's the 1924. <laughs> oh, mine is, I can't see this, Henry McKenna. Wow. This has a really nice nose on it. All right. My glass number. This is the one that I said didn't really have anything to it. Mine is the 24. In fourth place? In fourth place. My fourth place was the early times. Um, so wow, the uh, <laughs> they have the same mash bill, so apparently, I don't like that mash bill as much as I do the old Forester. <laughs> when I had when I tried the 1924 on Saturday, I liked it. My initial thought was this needs to open up, yeah, and I still think that because it really just doesn't have anything to it. You take a sip, and to me, it's sweet, but then it's gone, yeah, and, and I don't know, it just feels constricted like it need like a like a blend like if you bought a blended bourbon from Bardstown or barrel that needs to open up it kind of yeah. feels like that to me but third place what do you got uh, my third place is old forester orange wow so that's the twenty dollar bottle mine is the henry mckenna oh, that's my top <laughs> so i still have uh the, the cheapest bottle and the single barrel remaining so my second place blue small batch that is the single barrel black label so mine is the orange label in second place which means my winner is actually the 100 proof single barrel and yours is the early times yeah. <laughs> so you picked a 27 dollar bottle as your favorite and mine was a 70 ish dollar bottle 
But that was crazy. Like the early time, like it had so much flavor. And I've had it thousands of times, but I've mixed it. That was like my mixer. And like just having it straight, it is pretty surprising that I picked the early time Smiling Bomb as my number one. So there you have it. And we were talking about it earlier. You don't have to spend a hundred bucks yeah. to really enjoy the bourbon. Mine is a on the thirty dollars or probably around thirty dollars now because it kind of changed hand and sometimes they feel like it's going into allocation, so the price kind of fluctuates from time to time. But there's your winner. Yeah, I uh, I don't necessarily regret buying it. I'm anticipating that you know I've only had it two days. I'm anticipating that give it a month or two and it'll start opening up. Not saying that it's going to be king of Kentucky like I was hoping, <laughs> but. I will say that now I know not to buy another one. It was good. If I get halfway through the bottle and I start liking it a lot more, it starts opening up, okay, maybe I'll consider getting yeah. another. But, yeah, I would recommend not overpaying for this. Um, if you want to try it like I did, try it. You can always go to a bar and try it as well. But um, Don't overpay. Yeah. Let us know if you guys have tried it and what you guys think of it.